Today's scripture comes from the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 and verse 10. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim it to the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of God and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, Forty more days, and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. But when God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. We hear your call, O Lord. Help us. Give us the strength to say yes. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Let's get this clear from the very beginning. God had called Jonah. God had called him to go to Nineveh. That is very clear. So when Jonah was called, he of course got right on the boat to go to Nineveh, right? No, you all know the story. He goes and gets on the boat headed in the opposite direction. Because he doesn't want to be in, in the, the prophet to go to Nineveh. Nineveh was a hated city. They, they were, when, when they had ruled the world, they were just terrible to their captives. And, and they were horrible people. They exiled people and, and, and just were, it was just, the Jews didn't like them at all. So Jonah gets on the boat and goes as far in the other direction as he possibly can. <clears throat> I remember when I was called, I didn't, I didn't want to be a preacher. That, that just, that wasn't what I had planned, what, listen to what I said, what I had planned, Okay? It wasn't what I had planned. And I thought that I could hide from God by doing church work. I know that doesn't make sense, right? But I thought, well, you know, if I just, if, if I just lead the youth at my local church, if I just lead the youth at my local church, everything will be good. Oh, I volunteered, and that didn't work. And then I, I did a summer at, at Woodville as youth director. Had a great time. Uh, but I got to tell you, uh, I, I had another job as a youth director, and I, I learned very quickly I was a very lousy youth director. I, Lauren, I was terrible. I, it, was, it was not my thing, and I, and, and I couldn't hide from God by being in the church. I thought he'd let me slide. Like, you know, Jonah, he goes off and he gets on the boat and everything starts going wrong and, and the sailors, are, who were very superstitious, decided that there was something that was going on they needed to do and Jonah said, throw me in the water. I have heard God's call and if you, if you just throw me overboard, uh, everything will be fine. And so they did. They, they cast him overboard. And he was swallowed by a great fish. Now, the Bible does not say it was a whale. It says it was a great fish. And so he's in the belly of this fish in the depths of the Mediterranean. He's in that belly. I can't imagine a more desolate place. Can you? Than being in the belly of a great big old bass or something like that. I cannot imagine what that would be like. But even in the depths of the Mediterranean, in the belly of the fish, God was with Jonah. And when Jonah finally repented, you notice God didn't give up on Jonah. God didn't say, well, okay, Jonah doesn't want to go, so that's fine. I'll just find me somebody else. He didn't say that. When Jonah repented in the belly of that whale, of that whale, of that fish, when he finally repented, God was there with him. 
He was right there. There, The psalmist even says, Lord, even if I make my bed in hell, you are there. You cannot hide from God. It's impossible. If, if, if you follow me on Facebook, you saw a post this week, a post of a guy standing behind a post with his big old belly hanging out and saying, this is like trying to hide your sin from God. He's standing behind a post and his belly is hanging out. Can't do it. Can't do it. You can't hide from God. Jonah thought that if he went the other way, everything would be fine. But that's not the way God works. God said, Jonah, I have called you. And even after he was disobedient, even after he was disobedient and spent time in the belly of that fish, God was with him. And the fish spit him up on the shoreline. Can you imagine what he smelled like? I mean, let, you know, that couldn't have been, that, that couldn't have been good. And, and, you know, he goes to Nineveh. He finally goes to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a huge city. And, and he goes along, and, and it takes three days to cross Nineveh. But he goes for a day, and he's preaching as he goes along. And, and as he is um, preaching, people are repenting. God, God sent Jonah there to tell the people, in 40 days, you're going to be destroyed if you don't repent. And that's what Jonah was telling people. Now, secretly, secretly in his heart, I think Jonah could care less if they repented or not. I don't think he wanted them to repent. He didn't like them. He didn't want to go there. I don't think that he wanted to, them, them to repent. And so he goes in and he begins to preach, and they even get the king to come down and hear him preach and the king declares a day of mourning, and they get on sackcloth and ashes, which is symbolic of, of mourning, and they, and they repent of their sins. <clears throat> and the Bible tells us that God relented. He said, okay, you have repented of your sins. I'm not going to visit destruction upon you. Now, he's had, he has converted a whole city. Man, I would love to do that. That would be, man, that would be great to, to be able to say, with the help of God, I have converted this whole city to, to, and God has taken away His wrath and His anger. What did Jonah do? Jonah got mad at God. And he stomped out of town. And he sat down and he was whining. Now, we have a no wine zone in our house. You cannot whine about things. But no, Jonah went out and, and he was whining. And God said, what's the matter with you, Jonah? And he said, I knew that you were God of steadfast love. I knew that you loved these people. And I knew that you were slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and I knew that you would not kill these people. And God gave Jonah an object lesson. What happened was, as Jonah was sitting there, a, a plant grew up, and it covered him. Covered him. And we saw some of these in, in Israel that, that were, were big plants, and, and they, they had provided shade for Jonah, and, and he, was, he was comfortable uh, sitting in the shade, and, and, and he'd begun to feel a little better. And God sent a worm, and it destroyed the plant. And Jonah was sad because the plant had died. And God said, Jonah, don't, don't you understand? Don't you see? that just as you mourn the death of that plant, I would mourn the death of my children. Even though they have been unfaithful, I have been faithful to them. And they have repented and come back to me. And 
They're my children, and I love them. Don't you understand? See, Jonah, Jonah heard the call. And what's important for us as a modern church is to understand that God calls each of us to a unique ministry. We provide opportunities here. The guy that cuts my hair, J.C. down here at J.C.'s Barbershop, J.C. cuts mine and dims his hair. Now, he he doesn't make a whole lot of money off of either one of us. (laughs) But but he says, he, he tells people about our church. He's a good evangelist for our church. He says, I tell people every time I go by there, there are cars there. Something is going on all the time. And that's pretty true. We got a lot of stuff happening. He said, y'all even have more stuff than Temple going on. I found that to be a high compliment, to be honest with you. He said, y'all have more stuff going on than anybody else around. People know us. People in the community know who we are. They know that we will help, that we will help them in their distress. We have people come in who need help with their water bill, their light bill. We have people that come in and who are in need of gasoline. We have people that, that come in that need food. And we are volunteer driven. It's important that we have volunteers to come forward. Listen. Volunteering your time to the church is a part of what you have said you would do when you join the Methodist Church. I will support the Methodist Church by my prayers, my presence, my gifts, and our graces. We will will provide volunteers for the church. We will do the ministry that you have called us to do. Listen, we have people that volunteer on Wednesday night for the children. We have people that volunteer for the youth, to feed the youth. We, and if you want to do that, talk to Lauren. She'll be glad, glad to let you feed, what, 12, 14 um, youth on Sunday night. She'll be glad to let you. If you ever feel the need to do something like that, she'll be glad to have you do that. We have lots of opportunities. The, the food pantry, a uh, very important ministry that, that we have for people to come and to pick up food. We, you know, you may think, well, this is Lamar County, and we are, and let's be honest, we're one of the more prosperous counties in the state. There are very few counties that have what we have, the population-wise, youngest, younger, and, and um, population and, and more uh, wealth. But there are people in Lamar County who are hurting who need the food that we provide, who need the comfort that we can give them. We don't just bring them in here and give them food. We give them the Word of God. If they need a Bible, we will provide a Bible for that household and be part of that ministry also. Meals on Wheels, people. Outreach into the community is great. People hear the the stories of of these folks that they are serving. And and it's heartbreaking sometimes. And and knowing that they get at least twice a week, they get a a good meal to eat. God is calling. He's calling you. Each and every person who is a member of any church anywhere is called to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. To use their life as a blessing for others. When, when, when we give ourselves to God and we turn over our life to Him, it is amazing what can be done. It is amazing what change can be wrought in our heart when we are doing what God wants us to do. God is calling. God is calling me and He's calling you to volunteer 
to be in ministry in the world. If you don't know what you need to do, you contact us and we'll find you a job somewhere. You may have to go out with Hoppy to the prison, but that's okay. That may be your ministry. We have people turned on by going to the prison uh, and, and feeding those guys pizza. It's a great ministry. We have opportunities for people to come anywhere and help to volunteer. And today I'm telling you that God is calling you. God is calling you to be in ministry in this community, through this church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we hear your call. And now help us to open our hearts to you that we, as your children, will obey and follow you. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen.